Well, I'm a particle physicist, which means I'm studying the properties of particles, the most fundamental building blocks of nature, the things that all atoms and molecules and so on are made of. And in turn, uh, what I'm interested in is how those particles have influenced the way the universe came to be, um, the structures in the universe, the planets, the galaxies, and so on. All of that was tremendously influenced by the properties of these particles. Not just the particles that we see today, where we understand atoms as being built of nuclei and protons and electrons, but there's a whole other zoo of particles out there that existed during the early universe when it was very hot and dense, which have now decayed away, but played a fundamental role in how the universe evolved. And by studying particles that come to us still from the early times of the universe, or that we can produce in our laboratories using large accelerators, we can study these properties and learn a lot more about uh, the structures in the universe and about the fundamental properties. Uh, one of the areas that concerns me the most right now is something called dark matter. The dark matter we can see uh, through its gravitational effects that roughly 95% of the matter that we can account for in the universe, we have no idea what it is. It's completely unknown in some form of energy or some form of new particles. And so we've built a, a, a new lab, a large underground facility called Snow Lab in Sudbury, where Queens is playing a leading role. And one of the areas that I'd like to focus on there is trying to discover the nature of the dark matter. First, see if we can find it at all. Once we found it, try and find out what its properties are and how it has helped shape the evolution of the universe. Well, for me, uh, the research is largely academic. At least that's what motivates me uh, for Eons, we have been looking up into the cosmos and understanding how did the universe evolve to what it is now, what's our place in the universe, what's the world made of, uh, what are all the structures that we see, and what's going to be the evolution. And I think that's attracted the layperson as well. Um, and that's certainly what interests me is to understand the properties of these particles and how they have played a role in the structure and formation and evolution of the universe. On the other hand, uh, you know, through this research, we've been able to develop a leadership role for Canada in this field and uh, we have scientific excellence we built this new uh, international facility snow lab and that's attracted a large number of scientists to come here but it's also very attractive to students having a very vibrant uh, research facility and research program so we've had a lot of international students we've had a lot of uh, international scientists come and uh, as well as Canadians and uh, as a result, we've been a kind of a breeding ground for these students who have then gone on to positions of academia, they've gone into engineering positions, they've gone into high-tech industry, they've gone into uh, other areas like banking and so on. So it's, it's been extremely successful for students. In addition, although my interest is largely academic, we have, uh, in the research, we're sort of at the leading edge, I would say, of developing uh, new technologies, which are very complex. And those technologies that we've been developing for our use are often useful in other purposes. And so people have picked this up. Many of the detectors that we've constructed that are ultra sensitive to be able to detect these particles have then gone on to be used in, for example, in medical imaging where they're trying to detect particles in x-ray, you know, NMR, positron emission tomography, all those sorts of things. Uh, also used, for example, in Homeland Security, where you want to be able to monitor if a truck going by has any radioactive material in it. You need a very sensitive detector for radiation to be able to do that. So those are some of the applications. Other more maybe mundane ones, for example, where for snow, uh, a major issue with snow was to build a detector with uh, a huge amount of very pure water, purer than we've ever been able to make before. And the people who designed that system then went on to spin off a company where they build small water purification plants which they then install in cities uh, in Africa, etc., where water purification issues are a major issue. Well, within Canada, the CRC program, if you look at it in, in generality, has enabled us to build a research group all across Canada with CRC chairs at Queen's, at Laurentian, at Carleton, at UBC. In fact, our, I would say, our uh, research field is one of the fastest growing, and we've been able to attract people from, I mean, just in the last couple of years, I can think of new faculty and researchers who've come from the UK, from France, from Germany, 
And so by uh, basically by getting a critical mass of people that all have a certain expertise in this area, we've become very attractive to the rest of the world. So whereas in the past we talked about brain drain from Canada, I think this is an area where we're having brain gain. And so we're really being able to enhance this. And then of course it becomes a niche area for Canada where we've really become quite a leader in, in this field. Uh, in addition, because I have a CRC chair here, for myself it means I get a modest amount of teaching relief, which enables me to have a little bit more time on research, but it, the balance is right. I, I still have good contact with the undergraduate students, which is essential because I like to incorporate the undergraduate students along with graduate students in the research. They are the future graduate students. We can really get them inspired and frankly, uh, working with the students is inspiring to me as well. Um, so that, that's very nice to be able to have that balance with a little bit more research but still maintaining an appropriate contact at, with the undergraduates and graduate students. And I guess the other uh, thing is the leverage that it gives you with the CRC. I got some startup funds. Those startup funds allowed me to leverage more money and we have been extremely successful in our group here at Queen's in order to attract more money that in fact enables us to launch some of the largest programs that will happen at Snow Lab with physicists here at Queen's being the leaders on those projects.